So I'm on the Pixar website now, and a couple weeks ago I talked, or a few weeks ago now, two weeks ago, I talked about the Render Man presets that come in, or with Render Man, right? You go to your preset browser, and you've got all of these different materials that are pretty great. Excellent starting points. Um, and as we saw, produce great results. Um, but they're still kind of starting points, and they're all simple-ish. But Pixar, or the Random Man website specifically, has a bunch more resources. And uh, so if we go to uh, Community on the website and Resources, first we have some seamless textures, so textures that will repeat without you know, showing the scene. These are pretty great. But even greater is the next panel, the big RenderMan 20 library. Now, I know we're using RenderMan 21, but for the most part, they work. A bunch more presets. And these presets have more interesting textures. All right? So we've got some nice worn leather. Um, we've got some scratched metal. We have some wrought iron. Rich mahogany. Um, this rust shader is pretty great. We got old iron. Uh, you know, we've got painted wood, parchment paper, um, igneous stone, if you want that. So there's a ton of stuff, and all you have to do to get it. Just click on download, and it will download, and then you'll have it. Once you have it, put it in a safe place. You know, store it somewhere you're going to remember it, and then open up Maya, and you want to import that into your scene. So let's start with, I'm just going to select the body of the car, and I'm going to show you something else that I haven't shown you yet, and that's in the RenderMan settings. Render selected objects only. So if I select that and then hit render, as you would expect, potentially, it will only render the body of the car. And so as you can see, this is where we left off last time. Um, so this is great as you have more complicated scenes and you just want to focus on one material. Render selected items only. It will create faster renders and it will also kind of simplify your view. Um, so, if we want to add one of our fancy new presets, if I jump here to Finder, this, when you unzip the folder, it looks like this. We've got some light presets, some rig presets, uh, scenes. Don't worry about any of those. Just worry about the materials. Uh, and we've got all sorts of different things. So, we can go... Uh, let's look at... We'll do metal. So, we got bright alloys. we got... Uh, steel sword. We got wrought iron. I'll go. Let's go with old iron lock. How about so? In Maya, I'm gonna go to File and Import, and navigate to wherever you saved your RenderMan library. Navigate to, whoops, not natural. I want man-made metal. And we will go with old iron lock. And I will click import. Uh, I don't need to adjust any of these options. I think we're good. Click import. And uh, so it, it imports the object. And if I look at my hypershade, it's right here. Click on that, and you can see what that looks like. And then to apply it, just right-click and assign existing material. Old iron lock, worn metal. And then let's take a look at the render. And again, I'm just rendering what's selected. And there we go. So as you can see, these are starting points. These are not finished that's not obviously I wouldn't 
do a, a worn metal look here, but just as kind of an example. Um, I found, I'm going to not save that. I'm going to import another one. I liked the look of the scratched metal, so I'm going to import that. When I import this, so this looks kind of crazy. We've got all of these green grids that pop up. These are texture mapping projections. Okay, you can think of these as like the way it's applying the texture is taking an, an actual projector and then shining it at the object from a bunch of different angles in a way that kind of eliminates seams for the most part. You want to keep those there, but they're in the way and we don't, they're ugly. So if you go to your show menu and just uncheck, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uncheck texture placements. They'll disappear. You won't see them. They'll still be there. Um, you'll also see all these options in the outliner or all these items in the outliner. Again, we can keep them there or you can also just, uh, Let's see if we can, what's the easiest way to hide these? Mm. Okay, hide an outliner, there we go. Simplify the outline a little bit. Uh, so now I can right click and assign existing material and choose scratched metal. I'll come in here and we'll hit render. We'll see what that looks like. There we go, and we can see these kind of subtle scratches here. And again, this is a starting point. So now you can take this and you can, um, you know, change the color. You can add a little more specularity. Uh, you can see what I was talking about earlier with there are these subtle variations in color. Okay, it's not just all one color across the board. There's also some bump happening. If we actually go to our hypershade, uh, if we can kind of see it here for a second. So this is my oh, graph the network. This is the graph network. This is the node network that that imports. So as I as I said, this is a it's a great preset, and you can see that the the power and the depth of nodes and how how complicated this can get, um, which is why I don't want to get too much into down the rabbit hole of texturing. That could be easily be its own class. Um, so this is a great way to get. Excellent results without having to do the work yourself, which I know sounds like cheating, but um, for our purposes, I think it works. And again, I don't want to see you use just the you know, out-of-the-box preset. Modify it, adapt it, make it what you need it to be for yourself, not just you know, the defaults. Okay. That is, do a car paint one. So file, import, and it is paint, car paint, and we will assign car paint. And it'll come over here. We'll select the car paint, and we'll graph the network. Now again, this is another one where we're going to need to make a couple of changes, right? So let's see. This one gets a little bit more complicated. Um, I actually haven't looked at this one yet, so shame on me. This is actually a great example of one that we're not going to use um, because it's a very complicated tree and we're not going, oh, never mind, I found it, I found the node, it's just off on its own. So this is where we can adjust our, I actually probably want the bottom color to be this dark red and top color will be a little bit brighter. Let's see how that, does that work? Or am I just wishful thinking? There we go. 
So there's a car shader. You see we've got like a, a metallic flecked finish. Um, if there's time next week, I can go through how to build this from scratch. It should be maybe a little bit simpler. Um, but yeah, ton of presets. Uh, there's a good worn leather one uh, in there. Good metallics, some good stone. Um, will definitely help improve uh, the look of your robots.